I began to wonder, you know, could I anticipate what the world would be like when I finish a project? Because I realize a project, you know, can take three, four, or five years. It takes three years to develop a technology, and then you've got to start marketing it, and that takes time to gear up. And even in 1981, I realized the world would be a different place. And being an engineer, I gathered a lot of data about the characteristics of different technologies. I really didn't expect to find anything very predictable. I thought maybe if I visualized it in the right way and squinted at it, I could make some educated guesses. But I believe the common wisdom that you cannot predict the future. And that continues to be true about specific projects. I mean, using the methodology I'll describe in a moment, you could anticipate 15 years ago that search engines were coming. You could see that knowledge, information on the internet was exploding exponentially, that people needed a tool to help you find information uh, which wasn't available, and that the computational memory and communication resources needed to do a high-quality search engine were coming into place. So that you could anticipate, and that's actually quite valuable. Uh, what you would have difficulty predicting without some great insight is that there would be these couple of kids with their late night dorm room challenge that would, be, that would take over the world of search. So a lot of things do remain unpredictable, but you can anticipate where the general power of these technologies will be. And I made this surprising discovery that if you, if you take these fundamental basic measures of the capacity, like the number of bits we move around wirelessly, or price performance, like calculations per second, per constant dollar, they form exquisitely predictable trajectories. In the case of computation, it's for over a century, back to the 1890 census. And it goes through thick and thin, through war and peace, through boom times and recessions, including the Great Depression. People say, well, okay, it must have st slowed down recently in the, in the Great Recession that we're still struggling with, and, I said, and the answer is no. It's continued completely unabated, just as it wasn't affected by the Great Depression. Uh, it's remarkably uh, immune to all of these events, World War I, World War II, the Cold War, had no effect uh, on these trajectories. And so you really can uh, anticipate where technology will be, and it's not, but it's not intuitive because exponential growth is not intuitive. As I mentioned before, we have these built-in predictors in our brains. That's why we have brains, to be able to predict the future. So I could predict hmm, that animal is going to meet me if I continue on this path. Uh, that was useful. That became hardwired in our brains. But those predictors are linear. And linear prediction actually worked very well a 1,000 years ago. It even worked very well 50 years ago when most technology was not information technology. Information technology, though, builds on itself. We're using the computers of 2012 to create the computers of 2013 and 2014. We couldn't create computers with the price performance of 2014 in 2002 because we didn't have the computers of 2012 to do that with. So we're constantly improving these technologies by multiples. You know, when you have a trillion calculations per second, per thousand dollars, you're not trying to make it a trillion in ten, you're trying to make it two trillion. Uh, we're always using these tools to increase them by 50 percent or 100 uh, percent. And so it grows in, in an exponential manner. I have an analytical treatment of this and a mathematical treatment in the singularities near, none of which would be very interesting or persuasive if it weren't for the remarkably strong empirical case. And I'll show you a few examples. I have a team of 10 people now that gather data in these different areas. Uh, and it's just remarkable how predictable these trends are. In the case of computation, I saw this through 1980. In 1981, I projected it out to continue on this logarithmic scale to 2050. We're now at 2012. We're right where uh, that curve should be, a curve that I set 30 years ago. And you might say, okay, so it's exponential, not linear. What's the big deal with that? Uh, it makes a profound difference. If I take 30 steps linearly, that's our intuition about the future. One, two, three, four, five. 
Uh, that's what my linear-minded critics are thinking when they say that, well, for example, in my prediction that we'd have a World Wide Web emerge connecting hundreds of millions of people by the late 90s, and I made that prediction in 1981 when the ARPANET connected 2,000 scientists, uh, they're thinking linearly. Uh, critics were sort of declaring the general project a failure halfway through the project because uh, here was a 15-year project to collect the human genome, and after seven and a half years, 1% had been done. So they did 1% in about seven years. So like we said, it's going to take 700 years. That's linear thinking. My reaction was, no, we're almost done. And we did 1%. That's pretty much finished. Because uh, 1% is only seven doublings from 100%. It had been doubling every year. That continued. So seven years later, in fact, was finished. Every other aspect of biology as an information technology is now scaling up in a similar exponential manner. If I take 30 steps linearly, one, two, three, four, five, that's our intuition, I get to 30. If I take 30 steps exponentially, two, four, eight, 16, that's the reality, not of everything, not of every technology, not of every even apparently exponential progression, but of it's true of information technology, 30 steps, two, four, eight, 16 gets you to a billion. And it's not an idle speculation about the future. As I mentioned, this is several billion times more powerful per constant dollar than the computer I use as a student. It's also 100,000 times smaller. That took up uh, half of a building. Uh, this is thousands of times more powerful. Uh, we'll, we'll do both of those things in, in the next 25 years again. It'll again be a billion times or several billion times more powerful per constant dollar It'll be 100,000 times smaller. It'll be the size of a blood cell. Uh, gives you some idea of what will be feasible. The last general point I would make is that it's going, it's going to affect everything we care about. People say, OK, it's, it's exponential growth. It's true of this strange world of, of gadgets and you know, iPhones. And you know, that's wonderful stuff. But you can't eat that. You can't live in an iPhone. Uh, not yet, anyway. Uh, Personally, I feel I've spent a lot of time living in the cloud, but um, uh, you can eat information technology. Uh, there's a coming revolution in vertical agriculture. Uh, we're applying nanotechnology both through water purification and solar energy. I'll, talk, I'll mention that again uh, a little bit later. Uh, it's, I mentioned that we're transforming health and medicine, which was not an information technology up until just recently, but now is an information technology, and so is subject to this law of accelerating returns. Uh, those technologies will be a thousand times more powerful in 10 years because they're doubling in capacity and price performance every year, a million times more powerful in 20 years, and it'll be a very different era.